Okay, in this video, we're going to teach you about the method of maximum likelihood for estimating a statistical parameter and why is this important. Because in the next video, we're going to teach you how to rate sports teams and you could rate tennis players or chess players is where this basically originally came from the idea. Used to rate teams based on wins and losses, not the scores. So this would be good for tennis matches if you had the data. It certainly began with chess players, I believe, the great the work of the great Arpad Eli. And you can look up on Wikipedia or anywhere for Arpad Eli's book on how you rate chess players. Okay, but let's concentrate on what the method of maximum likelihood is. Suppose you watch Dwight Howard shoot free throws. Painful experience. Shoots 100 free throws. He makes 48. Based on this data and this information alone, what would you estimate his free throw for shooting percentage to be? <coughs> Sorry. And you'd probably say 48%. Well, what is, there, what is the statistical justification for this? What you do is you estimate the parameter here. P is the chance Dwight Howard makes a free throw. You estimate it as whatever value P would maximum maximize the likelihood of what you saw. Now, if you let P be the chance Dwight Howard makes a free throw, by the binomial theorem, which you probably had, you take the number of ways you could pick 48 successes out of 100 making the free throws. And there's a function for that. The ways to choose 48 out of 100, not important. And then you'd have to take the probability, well, well, let's let P be that probability. Our probability is the probability he makes it. Let's suppose it's 52%. And then the chance he would make 48 out of 100 there's a function binome disk that we'll talk about later, but basically you would take the number of what, the probability of one way of making 48 out of 100, which would be the probability times the probability. I'm going to name this cell prob. One way of making 48 out of 100 would be make the first 48 and miss the next 52. And the probability of that happening would be probability times probability to the 48th power and you would multiply that times the probability he would miss to the 52nd power and then you'd multiply that times the ways you could pick the 48 free throws he made out of 100 and that is combinations. Don't worry too much if you don't know this. It's not important. So you'd multiply that times the probability to the 48 times 1 minus the probability to the 52nd. And you'd like to pick the probability that uh, maximizes that. Well, see, this is sort of a hard thing to maximize. And so if I put formula text in here, Okay, this is a constant, the combinations, we don't care. But if you want to maximize a probability like this, that's a product of something to the 48th, one minus the probability of the 52nd, you should max the log of the probability, or what's called the log likelihood. Okay, because maximizing the log of something is the same as maximizing that something. Okay, if it's positive number. So I think you remember the logarithm of some rules of logarithms. The logarithm of the product is the sum of the logarithms and the logarithm of, let's say, something raised to a power is that power times 
the logarithm of which you're, you're based in. Okay, so what we, we don't care about this constant, but we want to maximize probably to the 48th times 20 minus probably to the 52nd. So that's the log of probably the 48 plus the log of 1 minus probably the 52nd. But what that is is 48 times the logarithm of the probability plus 52 times the logarithm of 1 minus the probability. OK, so that's what we want to maximize. So we want to pick a probability to maximize that, and we can use the solver. So the log likelihood would be 48 times the logarithm of the probability plus 52 times the logarithm of 1 minus the probability. So we should pick the probability to maximize that thing. See, that's a much more tractable number, OK, it turns out. Then if we had a thou if he shot a thousand free throws, this would be very close to zero. Maximizing log likelihood turns out to be much easier for the computer. So all I would say is with the solver, pick a prob maximize this log likelihood, pick a probability, and I should probably add that probability is between let's say 0.99 and 0 0.01, because if you can run it like log at zero. It's undefined, and you can run into problems with that. So we'll say greater than or equal to 0 0.01. And we get 0 0.48. And you could actually prove this mathematically if you know calculus. I mean, you get, take the derivative to be 48 divided by prob minus 52 over 1 minus prob. And if you solve for prob, you get 0.48. If you don't know calculus, don't worry. I'm certainly not expecting you to. But that principle of maximum likelihood is going to be a key for us to figure out, for instance, what's the chance of making a field goal based on the length of the field goal and rating teams based on wins and losses, which we'll get to in the next video. What we'll do is pick ratings of teams that basically maximize the probability of the sequence of wins losses that, that we observe in the NFL. And if there's a tie, we can count it as one win and one loss. So we'll show you how to do that in the next video. And basically, it's a, that's a form of what's called logistic regression. So we've done ordinary regression. But when the what you're trying to predict, the dependent variable is binary. In other words, it can have two outcomes, like win or loss make a free throw or not, you cannot use ordinary multiple regression. And I'll refer you, if you're interested, to the marketing analytics book for more of a discussion on this. But I don't want to get bogged down. But whenever you're trying to predict something where the dependent variable has two outcomes, like success or failure, they subscribe to ESPN Insider or they don't subscribe to ESPN Insider, they make a field goal or don't make a field goal, they win or lose a game, uh, then basically you need to use logistic regression. It's an important tool in any data scientist analytics toolkit, and we can introduce it to you in terms of trying to figure out ratings based on wins and losses. And the BCS forced the computers to rate teams this way not letting them use the scores of the games, which was sort of stupid. Okay, so thanks for watching. And, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston. Um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews. Uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here. And you can sort of see 4.5 or his newest book, his analytic stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21 day course from Dr. Winston. Um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.